In this video, I wanna share the number one mistake that people are making as they're focusing on recovering from their anxiety symptoms. Whether these are intense physical symptoms and every time you go to the doctor, they say there's nothing wrong and they don't really give you an answer for what's happening. Whether you're getting intrusive thoughts, depersonalization, derealization, whether you're experiencing all of these things, chances are you're probably making this one mistake. And the reason why I could say that is I even see people that are more advanced, people that are almost out of the cycle, almost having this inclination to make this mistake. And if you can avoid making this mistake, you can avoid sabotaging your recovery and you can focus on long-term freedom. So with that said, let's get started. Now, in this video, I'm not gonna break down the mechanics of anxiety. What are the steps to recovery? If you really wanna know more about that, I'll put a link down below to the desensitization blueprint. This is really gonna show you how to overcome your symptoms, really helping you understand the mechanics of anxiety, which is your nervous system is sensitized, and what you're feeling as terms of symptoms, thoughts, depersonalization, derealization, is a consequence of a sensitized nervous system, and as you learn how to desensitize it, which the blueprint will show you, well, you can focus on overcoming these symptoms. But in this video, I'm gonna really share with you this number one mistake, and the mistake is this. Stop measuring your progress based on your symptoms. People that are stuck in the cycle, people that might not know what's happening, maybe they don't know if it's anxiety, if it's something else, or people that are stuck in just coping or managing with their anxiety, the number one thing that you'll find that's consistent is that they're always monitoring their progress based on their symptoms. If the symptom is there, bad, oh no, I'm not doing well. Symptoms not there, okay, maybe I am doing well, maybe I'm getting better. But if you're focused on overcoming these symptoms, truly overcoming it so that these symptoms are no longer there, you're no longer a slave to the anxiety, you go back to living, being your carefree self, living fully and freely without these symptoms, well, you can't use this as a benchmark. And the reason that motivated me to make this video is because over the past weekend, and I see this happen all the time, I met some members in the mentorship they're doing so much better. They're pretty much out of the cycle, honestly. They do have some residual symptoms and they're regaining their confidence. But for the most part, from my perspective, they're so good, they're pretty much almost out of the cycle. And one of the members uh, has had the best two weeks she's ever had. However, she started experiencing the symptoms over the weekend. And her mind naturally went into... I feel like I'm back at square one. I feel like my symptoms are back, right? And so even her, who's advanced, had this natural intuitive response, I would say intuitive reaction that, oh no, my symptoms are back, oh, I'm going backwards, or I'm back to square one. So it's very easy to make this error. However, the focus needs to be on not whether the symptom is there or not, but focused on the response. How are you responding? Because the truth is, Anxiety recovery is not gonna be linear. It's not gonna be good every single day. There's going to be ups and downs. As you're pushing your boundaries, as you're regaining your life, as you're focusing on other things beyond the anxiety, your anxiety is gonna do everything to try to keep itself alive. And what it's gonna do is that the symptoms are gonna flare up, you're gonna have all these different things, symptoms are gonna morph, and if you're always monitoring your progress based on your symptoms, well then you're always gonna be in this hamster wheel of anxiety where you're always gonna be monitoring um, whether you're doing better or not based on your symptoms and you're gonna be lost. So I wanna give you two different examples, okay? I wanna give an example of, let's say somebody who's just coping or managing with their anxiety. They're dealing with intense panic attacks and in order to avoid getting panic attacks, they avoid going places and what happens is they just don't leave their house, they don't do anything. Now, if you ask that person, are you experiencing panic attacks? They're gonna be like, no, I'm not experiencing panic attacks. Now, compare that to someone else, but now learned the mechanics of panic attacks and learning how to respond. Now when that person goes back to living, the truth is is that they're probably gonna be experiencing panic attacks. But if you're monitoring both of them based on whether they're getting panic attacks or not, you're gonna think the person that's avoiding places is the one that's doing better because technically that person's not getting panic attacks. So do you see how monitoring your progress based on the symptoms is the wrong approach? If you looked at these two people, I would look at the person that's pushing their boundaries, that's learning how to respond to panic attacks, going out and actually experiencing panic attacks. That person is pushing their boundaries and is focusing on the recovery journey. However, most people would say the person who hasn't been leaving his house and that's been avoiding their anxiety, who's not getting panic attacks is doing better. And that's where people get stuck. So if you're really focused on long-term freedom, 
change this approach. Don't focus on monitoring based on whether the symptom is there or not. If you're gonna be monitoring whether the symptom is there or not, that's fine, but do it from a long view. Do it after a couple of months. Don't look at it week by week, don't look at it day by day, because the truth is anxiety is gonna be very variable. Some days are gonna be good, some days aren't gonna be so good. When I mean good, I mean the symptoms are there and the symptoms aren't there. I don't like monitoring progress based on that. To me, a good day is you're experiencing intense symptoms and you're responding to it. To me, as a coach, as a mentor, who helps people overcome their anxiety symptoms, that's a good day. So if you can look at these days when you're experiencing high symptoms, not as, oh, I went back to square one or I'm back to the beginning, but looking at this as opportunities. Opportunities to really double down your response. Because whether you're in the beginning stage and you're experiencing symptoms all the time, or you're having periods where you're not experiencing symptoms, where you're doing a lot better, whenever the anxiety comes back, when the symptoms start coming back, you're gonna have this natural habit of thinking, oh no, I'm back to square one. But instead of making that error, focus on long-term freedom. Focus on, okay, the anxiety symptoms are there, here's an opportunity to practice. Here's an opportunity to respond. Now, the final thing I'll mention is, what happens if you aren't responding correctly? Theoretically, yes, the anxiety symptoms should be higher. So you might be wondering, okay, Sean, how do I know whether the symptoms are back because I'm not responding well or because I'm just going through the normal anxiety cycle and this is just part of the journey? The truth is, is that the answer is variable. It really depends. For some people, I would be looking at them and saying, hey, you're just not responding correctly. You need to adjust this. Or there's some people that I would say, hey, you're doing everything right, this is just part of the journey, right? And so it really just depends. So I would always say, find somebody to help you on the recovery journey, somebody within your community, whether it's the mentorship or whatever, someone who's gone through this, who focuses on helping people with this specific problem. I know if you're focused on the anxiety recovery journey and you wanna do it solo, I understand how frustrating this could be where it's like, I just wanna know, but the truth is, is that there's no general sweeping answer of yes or no. It really varies. It really depends on how are you responding? How are you progressing? One of the best things you can do is really be self-aware and look at yourself from an honest standpoint and ask yourself, am I avoiding any of my symptoms? Am I doing any of the five Fs? Again, the five Fs you can see in the blueprint down below, but am I doing any of these things to prevent it? If you can unlock that awareness in you and then course correct, that's a big part of the journey too. And that's gonna help you long-term, right? In the beginning, it's kind of hard because you're new and you might not know, so a guide is really helpful, but as you get better, it's really important for you to start cultivating that self-awareness as well. So I really hope this video helps. Um, I just went straight into it, really wanted to explain to you what was happening. If you wanna know about how to find a guide or even apply for mentorship, I'll put a link down below. There's also some great resources, people who have recovered, people who are focusing on uh, long-term freedom, and you'll see, they say the same thing. They say, hey, you need to focus on the response, and every time you experience high anxiety, that's an opportunity to respond. And as you're doing that, once you look at it from a long view, then you can monitor based on your symptoms. You can look at it over a long period of time, but too many people monitor it too quickly, whether it's within days or within weeks, you need to give it more time. So I hope this video helps, and I'll see you in the next one.